All right, so we're gonna try this. See how it goes. So today we've got an eight kilogram block that starts from rest at the top of a three meter long, 22 degree frictionless ramp. At the bottom of the ramp, the block collides with a 12 kilogram block at rest that moves six meters per second away from the ramp. When the eight kilogram block bounces backwards and slides back up the ramp to what maximum height does it reach? This question has three parts. Let's break it down. Okay, so we've got these three parts here. We've got first, when the block is coming down the incline. Second, we're gonna get a collision. That's gonna be where we're using conservation of momentum. And then it's gonna bounce back off and slide back up the ramp. That's our third part. So when the first and third parts are pretty similar, we can use energy or use kinematics for those. And that middle part, that second part, we're gonna use the conservation of momentum. So let's take a quick look. If we think about this sort of backwards, we're trying to figure out how high up it goes up the ramp. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to need to know how fast it's going at the beginning as it starts to go up the ramp. And in order to do that, we're going to have to figure out some of the parameters of this collision. And in order to figure that out, we need to know how fast this block is moving down at the bottom of the ramp. So I'm going to talk about a few different points in here as we go through, but we're going to start off with part one. And our goal is to figure out how fast is block one moving at the bottom of the ramp. There's as I said before, you can use either energy or kinematics. I'm gonna use energy because I think in this case, it's a little easier, but either one would work. So let's get started with that. So if we talk about the energy this has, up at the top, it has just potential energy, gravitational potential, and at the bottom, it's purely kinetic right before it hits the other block. And so we get here this relationship, mgh is equal to one half mv squared. Okay, so we can plug some numbers in to see what we get for this. Uh, this is m's, well actually the m's cancel here. We can ignore that. And g is 9.8. The height is not this three meters. We're gonna have to use Sokotoa to figure out the height. And if we remember this angle here is a 22 degree angle. And so to figure out the height, that would be the y component of this diagonal three meter hypotenuse. And so we're gonna use Sokotoa. In this case, it's gonna be the sine of theta. So we've got g. Now we've got here that it's gonna be 9.8, that's uh, meters per second per second, times three meters times sine of 22 degrees. And that's gonna be equal to one half V. So if we get rid of this one half by multiplying by two over there and take the square root of both sides, let's see what we get. So we get at the end of part one that our velocity is going to be 4.7 meters per second if we go through and put this in our calculator. So next up, we wanna figure out if that's our initial velocity at the bottom, right when we crash into the other block, what is the velocity gonna be after bouncing back off? We're gonna use our conservation momentum equation. That's a big one, M1, V1, and on and on. Let's take a look. So we've got that equation, all the m1s and v1s and v2s and m2s, initial, final. So this is the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. And when we go in, we can plug in all the numbers we've got. We know m1 is eight kilograms, m2 is 12 kilograms. Uh, v1 initial, we just found 4.7 meters per second. V2 initial is actually zero because that block is at rest. And then we can go in here and find out V2F, we were given as six meters per second. That's one of our, our knowns here. 
uh, th this is six meters per second, and this one, that's what we're looking for. That's our unknown. So let's get busy, let's plug some numbers in. All right, so if we go through, plug everything in, simplify a little bit here, we get the left hand side, or the, yeah, on the left hand side here, 37.5 kilogram meters per second. On the right hand side, we get these two terms with this one here being VF that we're looking for, and that's gonna be times this, or plus the 72 kilogram meters per second. So we bring this over to the other side, we get negative 34.45 kilogram meters per second, which is equal to eight kilograms times the final velocity. So our final velocity is gonna be this 34.45 kilogram meters per second divided by eight kilograms. And so when we do that, we get that at the end of part two, the velocity is gonna be negative 4.3 meters per second. Let's get rid of this, and we're gonna keep going on to part three. All right, so for part three, the block is going back up the incline. And so here we know it's been moving now up the incline at 4.3 meters per second. That's our initial velocity. As it goes up, we can use energy like we did in the first part to figure out how far it goes up the incline. And that's really what we're looking for here is what maximum height does it rise to? Uh, so let's calculate that using energy. At the bottom, we've got kinetic energy. At the top, we've got potential energy. It's just the reverse of part one. And again, the masses cancel, and we can rearrange this to solve for H. Lights keep turning off. All right, so we've got this equation here. We can plug our numbers in and figure out what height it reaches. So for the velocity, we're using 4.3 or negative 4.3 meters per second squared, dividing by two G, and G is 9.8 meters per second per second. Let's see what we get. And so we get 0 0.946 meters that it goes up and that is measured in the y direction. That's the actual height that it reaches. If instead you wanted to calculate it, you might have accidentally calculated as it goes up the hill, how far up the incline it goes. That doesn't come out to be 0 0.946, but instead is 2.53 meters. These would be the answers for the questions. And with the intermediate values partway through of 4.7 meters per second, after the first part down at the bottom and negative 4.3 meters per second after it bounces back up the incline. If you're not getting those numbers, check your numbers and your work on those. Make sure you got all the positive and negative signs right. Make sure that you're using the right approach. If instead you went with uh, using forces, I'll give you just a preview. We've got to write down the force diagram, normal force, gravity force, break the gravity into components to find what component of gravity is pointing down the hill. And once you've found that, it's, a, it's just a little bit of doing F is equal to MA to solve for the acceleration. And once you've got the acceleration down the slope, you can use kinematics to find the rest. Uh, just for your reference, if you found the acceleration, uh, let's see what that is here. And that acceleration would be 3.67 meters per second squared down the incline. So as it's moving down, you would usually use it as a positive number, and as it's going back up, you might use it as a negative number because it's slowing it down, depending on the way you're setting up your positive and negative signs. So this is the approach for this question. I hope this, would, this made sense, uh, and I'll see you in class.